Hello, Saint. You are now listening to the teaching sermon from the God Life Assembly Just by Pastor Chintok Ishako. Remain blessed as you listen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. You're welcome to church once again. Welcome your neighbor. Tell them, welcome to church. Relax is your father's house. Amen. Scripture says that the house of God is the pillar and the ground of truth. So whenever we come into his presence, whenever we come into the house of God, we expect his truth. Truth comes in every dimension for different things. Scripture says that the word of the Lord, the law of the Lord is perfect. It means he's the medicine for every kind of disease. Hallelujah. The Lord put something in my heart this morning while we worship two things and I would share it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 1. Can you put it up quickly so we we'll read? While we worshiped, he said, he told me the unleavened, the unleavened, the living. Sorry, he said the living, that living's the lump. So I began to check what he was saying. First Corinthians chapter 5 from verse 1, he says, It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. He was talking to the church, the Corinthians. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as it is so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that ye had had that he that had done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily, as absent in body but present in spirit, have judged already as do I were present concerning him that had done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. To deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a, li a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out therefore the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Not with old living, neither with the living of malice or wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in my epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether the fornicators of this world, or with their covetous or stationers, or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother, a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such one, know not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them that are without? Do not ye judge them that are within, but them that are without, God judgeth. Therefore put away from among yourselves the wicked person. Hallelujah. God is talking to us this morning, and he's saying that, there's a living that you have to be aware of. There are certain conducts that causes the living to live in the whole lump. God is interested in the whole lump. Everything you do is not just, is not just affecting you. It's my thing. It's my sin. It's my weakness. It's going to affect the whole lump. So he's saying, purge out. Purge out that living. If you are involved in any kind of sexual sin and you are comfortable there, because Paul said you did not mourn and you're puffed up. It means there's something wrong with your conscience. Your conscience needs to come alive to know that because you were not found out does not mean that it's not affecting the lump. You have to look for a way that is the way forward. 
to be separated from that behavior because it's like a growth that is cancerous. It's something because it says you are puffed up instead of being sorrowful or instead of mourning. So it's like a growth that is not bringing nutrients to the body, is rather corrupting the body. Hallelujah. When the word of the Lord comes, it comes with grace. And if you hear it and receive the grace, what will come over you is godly sorrow, which is what leads to repentance. Because you realize that you are part of the body. You are part of us. Anything you do affects us. It's not just you. Hallelujah. So it says, purge. Let us take out that living. If you need to see somebody, if you need to see a pastor to speak and get help, get help. There's a structure that we have in this church to help you out of any weaknesses that you are struggling with. But to stay there and make it a habit, the only way that the body will not be corrupted is for you to be cut out because cancer keeps moving. It will take up the whole lump, but God is warning us this morning that we should cut it off so that it doesn't. So, but if you come through his grace in repentance, you will find help and you will be restored back in health to the body so that as the lump, we will grow together healthy. Hallelujah. So it says, um, let me just read two verses. It says, Purge out therefore, verse 7, Purge out therefore the old living, that ye may be a new lump. That's what God is making out of us. This season is a critical season. He's making a new lump out of us. As ye are unleavened, meaning you are not living, you know, in that place. You are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old living, neither with the living of malice and wickedness, but with unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Come clean, come sincere, and receive the truth of God, which is able to purge you, wash you, and give you an inheritance. Hallelujah. The second word that God gave me while we worshipped, he said, my way. That's what he said. He said, my way. And the theme for this year is what? Refresh. Restart. He restores my soul. And pastor has done teachings and series on, on it. I don't know if we have been listening to fortify ourselves with the consciousness of what God is saying and working in our midst in this season. But he said my way. And I, pastor began to teach from the book of John. And he talked about the old wine skin and the new wine skin. That the new wine that God is about to pour cannot be contained in the old wine skin. So there is the technology of he making you and reforming you into the new wine, so you, the new wine skin, so you can contain that new wine. Are we together? And so sometimes when we hear this kind of messages, we think he's talking about sin alone. There are some things that are not seen in the categorization of man that this is sin. But between you and God, it is sin. Scripture says, he who knows what is right to do and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. Meaning everybody seeing you doesn't think you are sinning, but you and God understand what's happening. And he said, my way. And he was specific. He told me some of you are looking for comfort your way. But he's saying, I want to comfort you my way. So if he's sending somebody to be your comfort, don't fight it and say, no, I want God directly to comfort me. If he chooses that this is the pathway from which he's going to speak to you or reach out to you, you must be sensitive to leave the old as spiritual as the old is. To embrace the new. Because many times what God is doing is beyond what you are seeing. He's teaching your heart, training your heart in obedience to respond to him. Way more than the incidents that is happening. A lot is going on in the spirit. So he says, my way. I was listening to a message that Pastor preached some few days ago. 
at, at um, I think Gombe or so, or Tuesday service. And he said, when Elijah got to the brook and he was sustained with the brook and the days passed and the brook dried up, Elijah did not stand there and insist in prayer that the brook must come alive. Because now God had made a movement to the house of the widow. So the sensitivity to know that the workings of God here now has shifted is that you make a movement to follow his way. Because pastor said, how can you go and be a dependent on a widow of all people who had one son, who had the last thing to eat and die? But his way is his way. And that's what he's shaking. He's shaking us out of the old ways, as spiritual as they look. Some consecrations you have kept and he's saying no more. And you feel, no, I must continue this, my fasting every Wednesday. And he's saying, break camp. There is a new that I'm showing you. If you're not sensitive, you will not follow after to be a partaker. And you cannot contain the new wine. Your container needs to be flexible enough, malleable enough, oiled enough to become the new wine skin to carry that which he's doing now. Hallelujah. Do we receive the word of the Lord? Hallelujah. I said, do we receive the word of the Lord? Lift up your hands where you are and say to the Lord, Lord, I've heard you. I've heard you. I heard you. I what? I, I've heard you. I heard you. Lord, I've heard you. I have ears that hear. Today we're speaking about the blood of the consecration. Lord, I have ears that hear. I want to be close, close to your heart, where heaven is real and death is alive. I want to hear voices of angels above, singing as one, hallelujah. Holy, holy God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none besides thee, God Almighty, the great I am. Close to your heart Where heaven is real And death is alive I want to hear voices Of angels above As they're singing as one Singing hallelujah Holy, holy God almighty The great See dry bones leaving again. 
None besides me. None besides me. God Almighty. God Almighty. Great I am. Great I am. We behold you, most holy one. We behold you, lamb on the throne, and we worship in reverence fear we behold you Jesus our Lord I am that I am indescribable indescribable God indescribable God I am that I am unmistakably God you are God A demon from and flee at the mention of your name, King of Majesty. There is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great I am. Great I am.
I will call on. I'll call this generation. I will speak on. I'll talk about my wondrous works. If they will hear me. I'll give them liberation If they will answer me Then I'll make up them a nation Have you not been told And I came to say to you that as it was in Exodus 19, God has made a choice. And God has chosen for himself as the I am a people. But you see, the choice of God is not enough. The response of the man God has chosen is what perfects the choice. I came to say over oh, you, God life assembly, not only in just, but in the nations of the world, that God has made a choice in us. He has chosen by the hope of all creation to finish in us the things that he started and was thwarted in many generations. And yet, as he is the word of the Lord this morning, he brings us also a warning. That we do not by any means deviate from the things he has said to us to the left or to the right. Because if he brought them out of the wilderness with the intent to take them in and found unbelief in the wilderness and did not complete his journey with them, then it would be futile for us to think that he will overlook our own mistakes and take us into a promise that many generations have waited for. So Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1. Now that we know that there's a promise that has been released unto us by the election of God, by the pure election of grace, let us therefore fear. Lest a promise be left to us of entering into his rest. Any of you that's why the Lord is speaking about the living. I talked to you about it when I started to speak about consecrations this morning. The problem with the living is not the one who is living. The problem with the living is its ability to affect the lump. And what you have as a living in the New Testament is what scripture called leprosy in the old. And leprosy is a type of the sin that doth so easily beset. Because everything in scripture is written in codes and types. And the problem with the sin that doth so easily beset is that if you are puffed up by it, like we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, what happens is that you secure it, you defend it, but that living begins to affect the law. And it's not only a living of fornication. 
That's why the Bible says you should also avoid the living of malice. Look at it. Malice is a living. Wickedness is a living. And I can tell you by the, by the liberty of the spirit that it is not malice, living, and fornication he's speaking about. He's speaking about every sin that can be said. He spoke about fornication, malice, and wickedness because he was addressing specifically the livings that are found in the Corinthian church. It's the living of malice that was in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 when he said, you are competing among yourselves and saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Apollos. He said, I thank God I did not baptize any one of you because you were not baptized into my name. The problem with that competition was that it became so bad that they added Christ to it. It's an insult. So the Bible says, purge the living. It's a season of the purging. It's a season of the stretching of the old wine skin. So that God can pour oil on it and heal where the cracks are. Then we can be ready for new wine. That was the reason for the second dimension of the word of the Lord that Pastor Sarah brought to us this morning. Because in the second dimension, you can't even sit down and say, well, I don't have any of these livings. The problem is that the former levels of oppression are no longer acceptable. Listen, the old wine skin contained wine. And when it contained wine, it was new wine. I wish you heard me. What the old wine skin calls old wine now was new wine yesterday. When the old wine skin took that old wine, it was the new wine. It then means that you can never be so transfixed in your ancient experiences of Jesus that you don't make room in your wine skin. Because what will happen is what Jesus prophesied to Israel. He said, I tell you the truth. Many Gentiles will come and they will enter into the kingdom before you. The reason is because you are embracing the fact that you have Abraham as your father. And the things you are doing does not correspond with the transitions that Abraham will have made if he met me. I told you, these three months are months of deep consecrations. Don't play with them. Don't play with any instruction. Because let me tell you, we will purge the ones we see, the Holy Ghost will purge the rest. I bet you in the next three months, there are many things that cannot survive this church. Including people. For we are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around. Let us For we are standing in his presence on holy ground. I need you to listen to me very carefully. I told you that what is living in the New Testament is leprosy in the old. Follow me. I can settle down and teach it. But believe me. You know I'm a student of the word of God. So believe me. And you will find out that in every healing of leprosy Jesus did, every, what he said to the leper is go and present yourself to the priest. Are you following me? Yes, sir. Go and read that scripture. Every time he said it, he said as a testimony unto them. That means the presentation I'm sending you to present yourself to the priest is not according to the order of Moses. 
Because according to the order of Moses, which is what I'm going to teach you when you sit down. According to the order of Moses, when that purification is done, the priest then has to carry out certain rituals around you. Which includes dripping the blood on your ear, on your right thumb, and on your toe. Because God needs to reactivate your hearing on the Balaka Tosia. And he needs to give you back your sickness. Then he needs to give you back the authority to tread the earth. And all of them are right for a purpose. Follow me. Because if you fail at the understanding, what will happen is that you will embrace your living and you will do it religiously. Jesus said, go and present yourself to the priest as a testimony unto them. Because if you go to present yourself to the priest, priest, the priest is supposed to ask you, how were you cleansed from your leprosy? So what Jesus was now doing was not that he was, because you will soon see when we sit down on that scripture, that the leper, that consecration that the priest does is exactly the same type of consecration that God commanded Moses to do for Aaron to consecrate him into the office of the priest. Same consecrations. Understand this. That means that every leper who is cleansed is consecrated as a priest. And that one does not have tribe attached to it. So it was not given to Levites. That means the only way a non-Levite can be consecrated as a priest in the courts of God is to become leprous. Oh, you didn't hear me. That means the admittance of my infirmity and my submission to it is God's process of raising and elevating me into the priesthood. Because every priest is taken from among men. So the infirmity is the qualification. It's not a disqualification. You need to understand it. That's the reason why you will never hear us speak condemnatively. Every time we speak, even if we are addressing sin, we are addressing it redemptively. Because we too have been redeemed. We have tasted of his mercy. I have tasted of the mercy of God. You are very good. I'm not. I tasted of the mercy of God. I tasted of the mercy of God. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. New every morning. Everybody say this one. Great is your faithfulness. The realization makes us say. speak about sin condemnatively because we were all redeemed from there Zechariah chapter 3 he said and I saw Joshua the high priest he was still Joshua the high priest but the garments he was wearing were filthy God did not change his title because of the filth of his garment But Satan came to accuse him because of his garment. Listen to this. I told you on Tuesday that no matter how hard you try, 
Because your nature is like sweat on a shirt. You cannot remove it. Somebody has to... So what did the angel of the Lord say? Take off the garment from me. He didn't tell Joshua, remove your garment. Yeah. 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 Can you see it? And he answered and spake unto those who stood by the angels of the Lord. I said to them, take the garment from him. Your, your greatest undoing will be to think that you can that you can put the living yourself. When they say to you, put the living, what you should do is lie down before the one. Call a barana makosetia pasahaya. And this is the confidence that we have. That because we have an high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ the righteous, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Somebody shout mercy! They are new. And you every morning, great is your fear. Don't ever miss saying it.
so powerful. There is no the Lord, there is no one as holy as the Lord, there is no one as holy as the Lord, here on earth and in the heavens of the There is no one as holy as my God. There is no one as holy as my God. There is no one as holy as my God. There is no one as holy.
We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You're the glorious God. We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. We bow before your throne. We worship at your feet. We bow before your throne. You are the glorious God. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. Hey, Papa. You are the glorious God. Hey, Papa. Hey. I beseech you therefore brethren in view of his mercy that you offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's where the living sacrifice comes from. It's the understanding of the mercy we have enjoyed. Say
worship of your people. Amen. If you can get your seat, please sit down quietly. As quietly as you can. Understanding that nothing has changed. So listen to me. I was speaking to you about leprosy. That's what led us to worship. And I told you, somebody has to help you take it off. So Jesus said to them, go and present yourself to the priests as a testimony unto them. And unfortunately, none of the lepers heard him. So as they went, they went religiously according to the order of the old wineskin. Because they felt like though Jesus is the one who healed, the priest is the one who consecrates. That's the Levitical priest. What they didn't see is that it was only in the case of the ten lepers that he just told them, go and present yourself to the priest. And, but every other leper that came to him, scripture said, he touched him. No, you didn't get it. Touching a leper is being con contacted yes, by the disease. Because an infectious disease is the living. So the leper is under obligation in Israel to come shouting, unclean, unclean. Because everybody needs to leave. If you touch him, you need to go and cleanse. In fact, in Israel, it is so bad that if mold rises in your house, it is called a leprous house. And it, it has a process of cleansing, including those who slept in the house. How badly does God want to take away the living? Guess what? Why were they all going to the priests? Because they were Jews. They understood the law. They were used to their wine skin. They know that it is only the priest that can collect them back into society. And they believe that when they stood in front of the priest, then God has accepted them. Do you now realize why when the ten lepers left and they were cleansed, the nine continued their journey to the priest they know. You see why God has to shift you from what you knew yesterday. They continued their journey to the priest that they know. The guy who is a Samaritan. Papa, everybody thinks he's already... He comes from a tribe that's not accepted to the Jews. They were the same club when they were all lepers. But when they became cleansed, nine were Jews. Oh, you didn't hear me. Jesus said, were there not ten that were cleansed? He said, but where are the nine? Stop. I thought they were obeying him. Oh, oh. If that guy turned back on the road, it means that the ten continued their obedience journey. And in their mind, it was Jesus they were obeying. But he was speaking according to a new order. That the tradition of the old cannot understand. So while they went on to see the priest, that Samaritan turned back and returned rejoicing, shouting, worshiping. Jesus said, ah, ah. Come. It's not 10 people that were cleansed. That means the new priest was not the one in the temple. So Jesus expected that as they were living and they became cleansed, they should have known that the only one who has the right to cleanse leprosy is the priest. The realization should have slapped them at the point of their healing. Then they will return back to the priest that healed them. So while you thought that it was a scripture of thanksgiving, it 
there was a scripture that was tearing out an old mindset and bringing in a new to say that you cannot approach God today according to the order of what you knew yesterday you have to humble your heart before him and sometimes you look disobedient but in that disobedience is actually the obedience So understand that when the Old Testament spake about leprosy, it was actually speaking about the living. I said to them in Gombe, the first day, I said, who does not like flesh, Bali? Who, do, who does not like flesh? I had to explain Isaiah 40 to them. I was going to start today's service from Psalm 102 and advance into Isaiah 40. So that I can remind you that God is in the process of building Zion. And the instrumentality that builds Zion is the blood. When Zion is fully built, then he will appear in his glory. In that day, the speaking in Zion will become God, the judge of all. Then when God, the judge of all, has settled, then Jesus, the mediator, will take over Zion. And he will rule from there as king. But that's no longer the subject. The word of the Lord has pointed us in a direction. Those of you who are in school of service this morning, I told you, I said I was going to speak this morning about the blood of the consecration. So when she said to me while we were sitting there that the Lord had spoken to her and I heard the word in 1 Corinthians 5, I told her, I said, I see exactly what God is saying. Hear this very carefully. And let it strengthen your heart like meat. So, Joseph, if leprosy is likened unto the living, who doesn't like flesh? You know what 1 Corinthians chapter 5 represented? That if the church had its way, they will mix godliness and the full manifestation of the flesh together. I said something to them in Gombe. Listen to this very carefully. That the guy, Pastor A, that rich young ruler guy, didn't live because he does not like Jesus. The Bible says he walked away sad. The problem is that many of us want to have Jesus and have delivered. That means the presence of the living is not an evidence of the hatred for Jesus. Are you? I wish you heard me. If I had my way, I will do the two side by side. So let me have living and let me have Jesus. And the Corinthian church had become comfortable in believing that they will have living and have Jesus and they are all right. No, no, no. There's another church like that. It's the Laodicean church. So the Laodicean church by prophecy will boast in what it has in the flesh. And it is still a church. And I told you a million and one times, the Laodicean church will live at the same time with the church in Philadelphia. That means that by consecration, the church in Philadelphia has to learn to stay far from the church in Laodicea. Because the living is nice. You don't think it's sweet to be a pastor and steal? You don't think it is sweet to be a pastor and take advantage of every lady God sends to you? It is sweet. You can even use anointing to explain your way out. You can. People do. People do and people still remain members in the church. In fact, they are more members sometimes. Because Timothy told you by prophecy, men will no longer endure sound doctrine. So if anything satisfies the each in their ear, they will sit down there. 
There are members who are waiting to hear what pastor is doing so that we can equate ourselves. Do you get it? Yeah. Uh-huh. If I now find what pastor is doing, I cannot, we cannot equate ourselves. One of my daughters, her boss has been chasing her for sex for four years. He's an elder in a prominent church in this town. So very soon I'm going to go and see his pastor. Yes, I'm going to go and see his pastor. You think it's because we don't like it? You think we don't know how sweet it is? Now that's the problem with the leaven. That's why the Bible says, purge the leaven. Are you following me? And the first level of purging, let me finish that message so that I can preach this. The first level of purging, sir, is your personal purging. Judge ye yourselves that you'll be not judged. Do you get it? Because if you sit under the light of God, there's no way when it begins, you know it is wrong. If you sit under the light of God and submit yourselves under the lordship of the people that God has set in and around your life, you will find out that there will be no need for cleansing beyond that level. Because see, God is not targeting the man. He's targeting the living. <laughs> now, if the man does not judge himself, what then will happen is that he will become comfortable in it. It is... Let me tell you something. It is not Jehovah. Jehovah does not expose a man who has fallen. Jehovah permits a man to be exposed when he decides to embrace his fall. I did not say a man who is fallen will not be exposed. If a man who is fallen is exposed, it is Satan at work. I need to come down. I think you need to understand what I'm saying. If a man falls and the man embraces God's processes of consecration and restoration, the exposure of that man is the working of Satan. It is in Satan's attempt to get the man to faint. Because what he wants to do, apostle, is he wants to make you believe that because of that one thing you did, God has disqualified you. And it's a lie of the devil. Jehovah can never be part of the process of exposing a man who has fallen. He's, he exposes a man who has embraced his fall yeah. as a way of life. And the reason why Jehovah exposes a man at that level is because the, the purging now has gone beyond the man. Everything that in the realm of conviction that the Holy Ghost should do for the man to purge himself has been done and the man is not responding. So God has to expose it so that the body will purge him. Are you following me? Because if in the process of the conviction of the Holy Ghost, he never responds to the voice of God, the tendency at that point is that he has become hardened. So even if the body begins the working of his cleansing, the hardness of his heart is likely going to show. That's why Paul said in the same first Corinthians chapter 5, will you not rather... So the ultimate point in purging is that the church is instructed by God to throw you out. What is so strong about this living that God would rather have you expel a person than permit the living to become a common place in the body? Can I tell you in one sentence? It's in Galatians chapter 5. Amana, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's it. I wish you heard me. That means if the church embraces that kind of behavior, God cannot establish his kingdom by that church. And the essence of the church as the ground and the pillar of truth it's not for us to supervise each other's life. It's so that ultimately his kingdom will come. He needs to find a place from which he will manifest his kingdom on earth. 
That's the essence of the church. Now, if the church becomes a place of the meeting of demons and God cannot manifest himself there, then the church itself becomes condemned. Oh, I hope you heard three levels of poetry. The first level of poetry is the personal poetry. The second level of purge is when God now exposes a lifestyle so that the body can purge. And in the process of the body purging, hear this carefully, in the process of the body purging, it is the last resort to kick the man out. That means the church must have done everything redemptively possible. Oh, one of you guys, come. The guys, come, come, Uche, come. I need you to see it clearly. Why is God so intent on purifying his church? I did not say why is God so intent on establishing condemnation in his church. It's important that as we keep advancing, we keep dealing with the fact because we have been schooled in condemnation for so long, almost every time we hear the word of the Lord, we mix it. It's our religious lifestyle. In fact, the people living in it are the people who first talk about the person they suspended in church. Does anybody hear me? Receive this living sacrifice. I am your worship. Accept this living sacrifice. at this because this will lead us to the blood of the consecration look at this now you need to understand that the process of personal purging includes or it is spearheaded by the direct ministry of the Holy Spirit yes so when a man begins to tend towards misbehavior the person who starts to deal with you is the Holy Spirit and please thank you sweet Holy Spirit and please don't be thinking about fornication when I'm talking because it is not the only living there are some livings that are more dangerous than fornication because they look righteous and even as a church they are difficult to purge even when God exposes because there's not anything to really hold in it and say this is sin and yet that living is living. You understand it? If a culture of pride enters, it's difficult to find it. Pride is slippery. You can't hold it. Even if you discern that a man is becoming proud, many times there's nothing to hold. So it becomes increasingly difficult to judge. Fornication is easy to judge. You know, a man cannot, he does not have explanation after he has fornicated. There is no explanation. What, what, is the, what will you come and stand and say? Excuse me, sir, it's the Holy Ghost that led me to where? But there are more dangerous livings that are difficult to even judge, even when you see them. How do you judge the living of sedition? When people start to come, separate themselves and put themselves in a class, how do you judge it? They look like a company of friends. So how do you judge it? There are certain things you better pray that the Holy Ghost by his conviction is able to finish with men. Because if it arrives at the congregational level, it becomes difficult to judge it. If you put your feet down as pastor and take an action, everybody will believe it's because you don't like them. Nobody will agree that there's something you saw in the spirit. That's why I said all that to say this, Rappi, that the best place for that purging to happen is at a personal level. It saves us noise in the house. 
do, do you, does anybody understand what I'm saying? Oh, that God will make us keep our feasts with the living of sincerity and truth. Is anybody understanding that scripture a little more? Because if everybody walks in sincerity and truth, number one, God will not even need to expose you, even if you fail. That's right. Do you understand? Even if you fail, you and the Holy Ghost fall, sir. You and the Holy Ghost say, Banaga makaba. Badana chemaka. I taught you now out of Hebrews chapter 12. That the father chastens and chastens and chastens. Then when you fall, it becomes a rebuke. Then the Satan who makes you despise chastening will now make you faint at rebuke. So when you fall, Pastor, and, and the Holy Ghost is rebuking you, he's rebu all of that is happening between you and him alone. And sometimes he includes the people that you have chosen to submit your life to. Because repentance has actions. Do you understand it? If a pastor in church falls by any means, he does not owe the congregation to come and stand here and confess. It's not the Bible. He owes me, a senior pastor, to meet me in my office and say, Sir, I failed the trust Jesus and you gave me. Do you understand it? Some people don't understand all that. So you fall and continue going. It's the reason why you cannot overcome it. I'm glad and grateful to God that we have never condemned anybody at a fall. Never. Never. That's because we ourselves have needed help on our journey. At this level, the Holy Ghost is just you and the Holy Ghost. Now, hear this. Pastor A, if a man has rejected the Holy Ghost at the level of chastening and has rejected the Holy Ghost at the level of rebuke, the tendency is that by the time the Holy Ghost exposes him, you don't expect that he will respond to you. And I'm actually talking to you. Don't expect it. If a person is caught and it is reported to you, go there presuming that if the Holy Ghost has tried this much, if he does not respond to me, I don't even have the right to be angry. Because who, who can battle with the Lord? The guy has battled with the Lord and came out victorious. And you want to try I'm saying it so that the pastorate does not kill any of you. You engage them believing God for the best, but expecting the worst. I wish there was a way to manage that contradiction. Sounds like a contradiction, Daddy. Abi, it sounds like a contradiction. Because you can't go in faith if you don't believe the restorative power of God. And yet, if you go with too much expectation, a man who wrestled with God and came out the next day, all he had is a limp on his leg. You want to now fight him? Do you want to die? That's why most times, by the time you are sitting in council with people, oh, I wish I was talking only to pastors. We have a pastor's retreat coming. They say, Salah, the Monday, we are going away. We'll do a sleep over away. So I'm telling you now, I think it's 17th of June or something like that. So all pastors, mark it. Is it 17th or 18th? Which one should I even do, Monday or Tuesday? Because I actually want to have two, two days of retreats. There are actually two days of that salah, Idil Kabir. So, okay, maybe the pastors, that Sunday when we come to church, come with your box. From here we go. We go sleep over on Monday, I release you. Because I'm sending for the senior pastors of all of the other churches. They will meet us there on Sunday night or Monday. And after you leave, I'll be with them from that night till the next day. Because it's a new day over us. Oh, I thought I had prophetic people. I said, because it's a new day over us. So, say, well, let's, let's speak about that after service. I decided that this morning. That's why you are just hearing it. Please hear this and understand it. At the second level, 
What happens is that the Holy Ghost has talked, 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 done all the hidden, hidden things. You know, I did a teaching many years ago and I told you that God gave you the sanctuary of your thought as a place for worship and as space for repentance. Do you understand it? Satan takes advantage of that sanctuary because it is a hidden place. He now hides evil thoughts there. And then he also hides... Churches are paying in dollars to cover tracks. And every one evil started from one thought. And that thought is incubated in the sanctuary where you and the Holy Ghost are supposed to meet. So you must consecrate that sanctuary as holy and not permit any other thought that does not rise up from the Holy Ghost. So that when Satan attempts to enter there, he has to sound like God. That's where Satan tempted Jesus from. So when he came there, he had to sound like the Holy Ghost. Satan didn't come to Jesus with horn. The Bible says he was tempted like as we are. If Satan does not come to us, he did not come to him. How are we tempted? We are tempted in our thoughts. So when Satan came to Jesus, he was in his thoughts. And on the last temptation, he had to quote scripture. Because he knows that it is easy for Jesus to put that space and say you are an alien here. Only me and God. Do you understand it? That space is what is called the Holy of Holies. Because if your body is a temple, then you have an outer court, you have an inner court, and you must also have a holy of holies. The sanctuary of your thought is your holy of holies. In that place, if any stranger enters, he has to try to sound like God. Do you understand it? Jacob has to go and kill a ram and wear the ram and make soup, trying to make it like Esau's soup. Satan should not comfortably enter into the space of your thought and sit down there and just build a tent. It's an insult. Your body is the temple of God. Your heart is the sanctuary where you and God meet. Even if Satan succeeds in putting a thought in your heart, let it be that at least he attempted to make it sound like God. And the only way he can even succeed if he attempts to make it sound like God is when you have traditions and philosophies that do not align with the truth. They sound like they are taken from scripture, but they don't align with the truth. Satan then takes advantage of that. In fact, at that level, you should still be thankful to God that when Satan came to you, do you understand it? When he came to you, he came to you sounding like something God permitted. You have to understand it from there. So if the Holy Ghost has talked and talked and talked and talked and you did not respond, oh my God, then what the Holy Ghost will do is he will open it up and anoint people who are leaders in the body. That's why you see ordinations cannot be done carelessly. Both by the givers of ordination and by the takers of the ordination. Cannot be careless. Because what we are expecting is that we're not expecting that it's your case we'll be handling. Is, is anybody getting me? And I'm not saying that because we are priests, we are not tempted. We all are. But you must understand the holiness of that space. So God then anoints this man with a right word in their mouths in season. That should minister grace to you and bring you understanding and perfect the conviction that the Holy Ghost has been trying to convict you. If you refuse that level of cleansing, the church by scripture is under obligation by God to expel you, 
That's why 1 Corinthians chapter 5 said, I have told you before that you should have nothing to do with fornicators of, of this world. He said, do you think I'm talking about the fornicators in this world? He said, if it's the fornicators in this world, you have to leave the world. Because the moment you step outside of here, fornication is normal. I'm not saying it's normal for you. I'm saying those who don't come inside here, is how many you are fornicating? That is their question. It's not. And I'm not just talking about adultery as a sin. I'm talking about every other kind of fornication. So Paul said, how can I tell you to have nothing to do with fornicators? My brother, if I tell you to have nothing to do with fornicators, we have to remove you from politics. Abi, honorable, we will have to take you away from politics. Because in the ground itself is everybody scheming every kind of nonsense. So Paul said, am I talking about the fornicators of this world? If it's the fornicators of this world, then you will literally have to leave the world. He said, but I'm talking about those who want to be brethren and want to sustain a lifestyle of it. In fact, by, by the time you read in 2 Corinthians, you'll find out that that isolation is God's final attempt to redeem. Let me tell you something. If you fail at it, you will fail at redemption in the day we are attempting to redeem you. I can bet. I can bet as high as 5,000 US dollars. I made it that high, not because I have money to give. I made it that high so that you understand how high the stakes are. Before I say 50,000 US dollars now, then somebody will now block me by the road. I'm, I didn't say 5,000 US dollars because I have it. I'm saying to you, I can stake, five, I can drop 5K in USD now and bet with you. But if you fail at this process, you will fail in the day that the church tries to correct you. Guess what? The first thing you, you actually fail at is the fellowship of the brethren. Actually, God expects that when you get born again, everything about your life should become church people. I wish you heard me. It is due. Just help us remove it. Just remove it like that. Thank you. Don't distract us. Just remove it. Listen to this. No, stay with me. Stay with me. It's not. Is anybody hearing me? Yes, sir. So in the early church, when people gave their lives to Christ, they literally came to camp with each other. Because many of them were backward driven from their houses. So if you find the cultures preached in Acts chapter 2, which is one of the things Satan has succeeded in doing in the 21st century church. But we push back that tide of darkness in the name of Jesus. He has succeeded in making us suspect each other. So the best we are to each other is we are church members that worship in the same church. The highest level of brotherliness is supposed to be found in the body of Christ. That's why God does not deal with division with kids' gloves. It has always been Satan's attempt to destroy the church. Because the moment you give your life to Christ, first thing God does is that he puts you in a family and then makes that family your all in all. Do you understand it? So that if you were in trouble, Dickie, you would will, you will be thinking, let me call Pastor Perez. Let him pray with me. Ah, no, let me call Pastor Rampial. Let him pray with me. If you were happy, the first set of people you will call for dinner is not your club friends. I play tennis. I'm in a club. None of them is my friend. Don't tell them I told you. I hope there's none of them in this church. Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. Pastor A is in the same club with me. And Ilya. Kariani, none of them are my friends. And no fit. They are my friends, so. My coach is also in this church. But my coach is not a member of my club. Okay, he's not around today. He told me he was going to travel. Are you alive? Yes, sir. I'm saying none of them are my friends. Rich people, good people. Almost all of us have big stomach. But, all right. 
Now, I did not say I'm not courteous. If I go to club and they come around, we can sit down and gist. Of course, you know that there are certain gist they cannot gist when I'm around. Because I will tell you straight. That's the reason why you are perishing. Yes, yes. Me, I'll tell you. I don't care what you are, what you have. I did not eat your house this afternoon. I will not eat there tomorrow. God is taking care of me. I will tell you. Some of you miss the opportunity to preach. That's what, listen, if, if unbelievers can say anything around you, something is wrong with your witness. You can't be a believer and build your joy around your social club. It is wrong. I'll tell you the reason why. I told you if you fail at this, you fail in the day of that chastisement. Why? Because ultimately, in the chastisement cadres of God, at the ultimate part is that we have now established after everything we said to you that you don't want to change. So nobody should have anything. You know, you know some of you are very righteous. When we put a person in that place, that's when you feel the need to love the person. And you know, it's, it's a righteous feeling. Except that it's a godless feeling according to scripture. Because what is a totally godless feeling? Totally. You are trying to be social on spiritual things. What Jesus said, what, what the apostle Paul said, is that when you ostracize him, it becomes a punishment for him. Because he can no longer call the king Ladan and say, let's pray. He can no longer call Pastor Elsie and say, I'm in trouble. He can no longer call Pastor Hidi and say, come, let's rejoice. So when the church separates a person, you too, you must step back from it. What that does, sir, is two things. He suddenly realizes that his entire life is built around this company. So God gives him a final opportunity to make a choice between returning to the sweet fellowship he has enjoyed in the company or going on to live a life of sin. Does it make sense to you? That means you that receives that kind of person, you are part of the living that wants to live in our lump. Now, this is the third and dangerous one. At the third level, is anybody getting this living understanding? Get it. At the third level, if the church now decides to be diplomatic around it, because he's the person that gives us money, <laughs> he's the one that is to sponsor all our program, so the standards of the word of God change for his, for the sake of the gospel. That's why you got this one. You understand? You know, for the sake of the gospel, that can, if we now, if I now suspend Joel by me, who will be feeding me? Do you understand it? Do you understand it? It's part of the reasons why, oh, pastors, we'll meet, we'll meet. The consecration in our hearts must never permit us to bow to anybody, no matter what grace they supply. Because I know that there are priests in the congregation, let me tell you the rule in scripture. Jesus sent his disciples two by two. Then he told them, don't carry food. Don't carry anything. He said, because I'm taking care of you. Then he told them what to do. He said, if you enter a city and you knock the door and shout, Shalom, Shalom. If they answer from within, Shalom, you have found a man of peace. Then he said, enter there. Listen to this. Eat whatever is served you, nothing doubting. Then he said, and let your peace abide there. Hey. Let me tell you the implication of that. It means that you should not eat there believing they are doing you a favor. Why? Because the peace you cost to dwell there is higher than whatever they gave you to eat. Let me say this with my eyes clear. There's nobody who has given me an offering who does not owe my priesthood.
I knew that was going to sound proud, so I'm waiting for it to shake you. Go and quantify what a covering is in the spirit. Then tell me how much you have given me. You can't buy a covering. Do you understand it? So, sir, nobody will bring an offering of 10 billion to this church today. And then I will now think that the rules of God will not play in his life. Because I don't consider your 10 million a favor. Listen, God has blessed me in this church with certain humble givers. And I know the yardstick for the test of humble givers. You see, if a person wants to bless pastors, and they come to you and they say, sir, this is what I want to do to bless pastors. Can I pass it by you so that I can reach them? You now know that you have found a person who understands the grace and the office of a giver. If you go ahead to do it by yourself, I suspect you. Eh. Do you understand? I wish you heard me. I did not say if you go ahead to do it by yourself, you have done wrong. I just said I suspect you. I will ask you to double check the motive of your heart because it is very likely wrong. Sometimes you find blessed people who even have done it and then they come to you as pastor and say, ah, sorry, oh, I felt like I should take care of this, this and that. Eh. Now, <laughs> feels like we're in AGM. But I owe you. I came from Gombe yesterday and Gombe was nothing short of a revival. The last four days will be recorded in the history of Christianity in that, nation, in, in that state market. And I left Gombe je jealous for you. Because I was saying to the Lord, why will you do in Gombe what you should have been doing in Joss? And what's worse, you now decided to do it by me. Now hear this. Let me step out of that place. Look at this. So the system called church, Pastor Oni, is not permitted to separate or consecrate a person on the strength of a gift he supplies, or on the strength of a resource he brings. It becomes the foundation for partiality and the foundation for wrong judgment. And it takes a height of consecration in your heart as a pastor for your view of people not to change when they begin to do things around you. I know some of you, the spirit of foolishness is standing by your ear right now and telling you, mm, yeah, I'll never give pastor anything before you say I'm trying to bribe you. Unfortunately, it is a commandment in scripture for you to give to me. John Sandy. So, Papa, there's no escaping it. The only way to escape it is consistently put your heart on that check. Oh, I thought somebody heard me. Do everything from a clean motive. Now, of course, you know that a clean intent is not, doesn't make your action accurate. That's why God honors the clean intention of your heart by increasing teachings like this. Because teachings like this don't come to condemn you. They come to make you a bit more, how did I get there? So there should be nothing in church that makes that we now spare this brother. Because if we spare this brother, what we are doing is we are culturing the living. So the living will naturally begin to spread. While you are thinking, we are blocking a financier. We are blocking a gifted person. We are stuck. Do you understand it? While you are thinking that, what you did not know is that Satan has gotten what he wanted. You explained why you covered the guy, but that became the beginning of the leavening of the lump. In my mind, I'm preaching good, though, but the way you are responding is telling me something. I need to close. I, 
Are you following? Are you following? Now, when the church arrives at that compromise, all of you come, 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 come. Let's cover him. Come. Don't do house of Judah coming, just come. You know they always come in line. Cover him more around, cover him more around. So he's our superstar. So we are covering him, we are covering him. Let's cover him. Let's cover him. He can be doing rubbish. Let's cover him. The problem is that as we are doing this covering, the living is spreading. It has touched this person, this person has sent it to that person. So you wake up one day and find fornication everywhere. Because like I said to you, flesh is sweet. The voice said, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? He said, cry that all flesh is grass and the glory of flesh is like the flower of the field. Stop. Jesus said, behold the flower of the field. Which today are and tomorrow are not. That Solomon in his best attire is not as beautifully dressed as a flower of the field. That means the glory of flesh that is as flower of the field is fine. Is fine. Pride is fine. Fornication is sweet. Stealing is... is hey! Even the Bible had to write it for you. Stolen waters. Because it's sweet, any attempt to cover is the beginning of the spread. Listen to this. This is the next problem. The next problem is that God, when he's looking for a church to move by, cannot come here. So there are several places where people are congregating, sometimes in thousands. And God has moved on to look for other places where people are still worshiping him in truth. And if he finds that place, man, under a tree, he will meet them there. Receive this living sacrifice. I am your worship. Accept this living sacrifice. I one more time. Say receive. Receive this living Say it again. Say it again. Presenting yourself to God so that He can cleanse, He can fix. first level of sanctification that level of consecration I'm going to teach what I intended to teach today on Tuesday so I'll see you in church on Tuesday oh hear this 
Because there are many things in those layers of consecration we could not touch. And I'll take the time on Tuesday to settle down and teach it. But look at this. You see, at that first level, when you are still struggling, the Bible says, if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer by sprinkling cleanses a man's body so that when God looks at him, he says, this man is holy. How much more shall the blood of the sprinkling that was shed through the eternal spirit cleanse our conscience from dead works so that we can serve the living God. Today, when we come to the table, we come to the blood that cleanses our conscience. Today is the communion of the purging of the leaven. There already is a choice in you. I told you God has made a choice in us. God has already made a choice in you. And once God makes a choice in the people, I'll teach it on Tuesday. The next thing Satan attempts to do is to put in the living so that God is forced to turn against his people. That's what Pastor Atta said in prayer. That Israel was already chosen. And, ba and Balaam, the Midianite, came as a prophet. I had to turn to explain to my wife because I told her, I said, God honors covenant. You will find in scripture that God walked with people that were not Israel. But all the people that you find that God seemed to have walked with were Abraham. Do you understand this? That's why, sir, the wife of Moses, Miriam, was the daughter of Laban. Where was Laban from? Miriam. There was a guy from Haran. So that God followed everything that was Abraham and kept covenant with it. And yet, he exalted Jacob as the blessed. Oh. Oh. Follow the thought. If you understand it, you will now get how to come to the table. So Balaam, a prophet of God, was employed by Balak to curse the people. He turned every side. He could not curse them. Balaam even begged God and said, please. Then Balaam called Balak aside and said to him, you know what? These people are blessed. They can never be cursed. Why well, wish somebody heard me. That's actually the lot of the chosen. That's why we can get up and say there's no devil anywhere. We are not denying the existence of Satan. We are saying we are the chosen of God. Righteousness and truth is the love that you shed abroad in our hearts to prove that you care for us. Sing. In you we live and move, and we have our being, oh God. We offer up to you a sacrifice. Say it again. Righteousness and truth, righteousness and truth. It's the love that you share in our hearts to prove, in hearts to prove that you have more. In you we live and move, live and move, and we have, we offer up to you. Say one more time.
So in Galatians, Paul established that what makes a man the righteousness of God is believing. Somebody shout, I believe. But the moment God rests upon a people, what Satan does is that Balaam takes Balak aside and says to him, the only way you can come against these people is turn their God against them. And how do you turn their God against them? Find some of your beautiful girls and send them into their camp. Let them check out that babe. Let them check out the lifestyle that others are living that they are missing. Let them check out what other people are enjoying that they are lacking. You see, that's the reason why God keeps us in, in company. Because whatever is happening in the world is not our business. If we go out and we finish our daily interaction and we see all their madness, by the time we come back, one brother will say a word that will wash up that dust from our feet. That's why God keeps us in company. So the only way we can do it is send a living in their midst. It, did you hear what Pastor Atta said? I studied it before. It was the singular day that the highest number of Israelites died at once. But today, if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an Hifa by sprinkling is sufficient to make God look at Fali and say, yeah, I can accept you. How much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself once unto God, put our conscience from dead works that we may serve the living God. Today, we come to the blood to purge our conscience. Today, we come to the table. Ah. Pastor Sarah, Pastor A, Pastor Nismos, come, come and help me. Sister Ladan, come. Sing it. Say we are. chapter 10 verse 20 on the board the Bible says that he consecrated a way for us by a new and a living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh 
That means when his body was torn, the veil was also torn. So we can enter into the Holy of Holies. So today, Father, we bless the bread. We celebrate the new and the living way. We celebrate the fact that we can enter boldly into the throne of grace and obtain mercy. So as we bless this bread that is your body right now, and as we tear it, we decree in the name of the Lord Jesus an entrance into the things that we could not enter before. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That we are not limited. Everything that is available in your grace, we enter into it by this. And Lord, today, by the same token, we lift up the cup and we bless it. This is the blood of the sprinkling. The Bible says it purges our conscience. It separates our conscience from dead works so that we can serve you acceptably. Lord, today, for everyone who walks to this table believing, separate them from the living that has given them. From every yoke and the sin that does so easily beset. From every weight and everything that stops them from running the race marked before them. Let there be a separation by your blood. In the name of Jesus. We decree it so. And we call it done. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to ask Wap Wapnen. It's, it's such a joy to have Wapnen in the house all the way from Benin. He's going to be around for a while on this trip, so I'd ask him to come in and bless the church. And he's going to psalm while we come to the table. He's going to psalm while we come to the table. But please hear me. Um, as this customary pastor, take, pastor Amuz will take charge of the table. Can I have the pastors just come? And then we'll take it from there. Let's receive what happened as he ministers.
I'm free to lift my hand. I'm free to say amen. stopping you from saying amen see to it that you do not refuse him see to it that you do not refuse him in unbelief please while that is happening I sense the need to lay hands on every pregnant woman every so you are pregnant in church whether your husband knows or he does not know the moment you take your communion walk straight this way I will lay hands on you and you return to your seat. Make sure you do it after the communion. Please hear the instruction. I'll be here till the end of communion today. So when you take your communion, wherever post, whichever post you are taking communion from, just come down straight to where I am. I will lay hands on you and anoint you with oil and you'll return to your seat. We are free.
my tongue does confess. Till my tongue does confess a blessed day. hearers of your word, we are doers of the work. And now we have propelling energy by your blood and by your flesh to arise into separating the living and purging it. Lord, like the Lord Jesus, please grant us the privilege as a generation to be able to say of all that you have given to me, I've lost none. Lord, even the ones who are falling, let them respond like Peter. 
I decree that they will not faint like Judas. That we arise in strength, insisting that the Lord finds an inheritance in us. Father, I release the blessing of the bread and the wine upon your people. Every time the priest is met, he comes with corn, with wine, and with oil. I ask in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the blessing of corn, wine, and oil remain in this house perpetually. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, favor your, your children. children. Cause them to stand out everywhere they go. Let your light brighten their countenance every day. Surround them with favors with a shield. Strengthen them, O oh God. Go before them and be their rear guard. Lord, we have established that by the testimonies of safety that you brought forth today by Philippa and Caleb and, 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 and Chidima in the birth of Judah, we decree in the name of the Lord Jesus that testimony remains perpetual. We will never lose a child at birth. We have ceased the length of labor. We decree in the name of the Lord Jesus. Perpetual ease becomes our portion. Has the Lord ever brought to the point of delivery and has not caused to bring forth? I decree in the name of the Lord Jesus. At the point of bringing forth, enjoy the strength of God. And not only in pregnancy, in whatever God has conceived by you, at the point of giving birth to it, receive ease and strength in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is a fruitful house. As we wait upon you, show us the places where we must fruit and multiply. Let your hand be perpetually up upon us. Yes. Let your strength cover us. Yes. We give you praise and glory. Yes. In Jesus' name and the church says, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Would you celebrate the Lord and take your seats? Amen. We have come to the end of today's sermon. You can listen to more sermons from www.pastorchintok.com or listen to our teaching podcast from Google, Apple and Spotify podcast services using the channel The GLA Podcast. You can also follow live services on www.mixlr.com slash the GLAJ.